Welcome to episode 31 of Discovering Nagasaki from a Local. My name is Chad. In my ongoing weekly vlogs, you can experience everyday life in this scenic and fascinating part of Japan. So far only Denise Roheiser and Daniel Hazen were able to correctly answer both of last week's vlog questions. Thank you for uploading your answers. The first question from last week was, what color shoes was I wearing in the bakery for that vlog? The answer is white and blue shoes. The second question from last week was, how many signboards did I show you in Jigoku Park? The answer is five signs, three large ones and two smaller ones. Any answer between three and five signs was acceptable. And now for this week's crash course in kanji root particles. Group R kanji root particles include Moreover Take Uncle One of a pair Festival Strike Vertical Slave Against support, and skin. I will cover group S kanji root particles next week. Anyone who has an interest in Japanese food, fine arts, or martial arts will benefit from a basic knowledge of kanji. Please support this vlog channel by clicking on the subscribe button below, ringing the adjacent bell for update notifications, and clicking the thumbs up button. In today's vlog, I will show you how I transplanted our last remaining winter seedlings into the garden. I will also show you around Nagasaki's harbor in Motofunamachi. Let's get started. Today I'm going to transplant five different types of seedlings into the garden. Earlier I used my Honda cultivator to till the soil between the rows and in the areas where the seedlings will go. These are the outside times of the Honda cultivator and the wheelbarrow. Over there where the trellis is, I will transplant two trays worth of pea seedlings. I've already spread them out on the soil and taken off their plastic pots. By taking off the pots, it greatly speeds up the transplanting process. I'll take you closer to the house and show you where I have set up some other seedlings on the soil. You can see my wife, Yasko, on the left harvesting in the garden. In this section up ahead, I will transplant four different types of seedlings. We use chamomile seedlings that you see on the left here as helper plants because they help to keep away the bugs. Nearby I have a partial row of sunny lettuce seedlings and Chinese cabbage seedlings. They have a partial row of chamomile seedlings and right next to that a partial row of sunny lettuce seedlings. In the side garden I have three partial rows of sunny lettuce on the left, chamomile seedlings in the center, and on the far right some broccoli seedlings. I'll start with the pea seedlings. All I need to do is dig a small hole with a hand shovel place the seedling in the soil and then use a little pressure to seed it upright. Too bad this trellis is obstructing your view and mine as well. Now I'll transplant one of the chamomile seedlings near the house. This time it'll be easier to see. We also make our own chamomile tea bags with the chamomile flower. Now I'll transplant one of the sunny lettuce seedlings over here. As it turns out, transplantation is the best way to ensure a good harvest, especially for organic farming. Now I'll transplant one of the Chinese cabbage seedlings. It's a little time consuming, but very easy to do. These particular seedlings will go rapidly over the next two weeks. Lastly, I'll transplant one of the broccoli seedlings over here by the fence in the side garden. There were three broccoli seedlings in this pot, as you can see, and now they'll have more soil to spread their roots into. Now all I have to do is transplant the remaining seedlings in the garden.
It took me about 40 minutes to transplant and water these seedlings, but now they're all done. Here's one of the onion seedlings that uh, we transplanted last October in these four rows, along with these sky bean seedlings. We also have some komatsuna, carrots, bok choy, mizuna, and some spinach, as you can see here, and some chamomile flowers growing on this side of the garden. Here's a look at the pea seedlings that I just transplanted under the trellis. Here's one of our old broccoli plants. Here you can see uh, the beets and the Chinese cabbage that we planted in December are doing well. Because we are organic farmers, we also have quite a big crop of grass mixed in with the vegetables. Here you can see the chamomile. The sunny lettuce. And the Chinese cabbage seedlings that I just transplanted. Over on the step by the house, there are 400 or so ceiling pots. Uh, we'll use them again for our next crop. And here's what the transplanted seedlings in our side garden look like. Sunny lettuce, the chamomile, and the broccoli. I'm now in front of Yume Saito department store, which is right beside Nagasaki's main harbor in Motofunamachi. On the second floor of Yume Saito, you can get a great view of the ship stocked in Nagasaki Harbor. The people in these cars below are actually waiting to buy vegetables from this drive through farmer's market. On the right in the distance, you can see Nagasaki's harbor terminal. The harbor terminal building is on the other side of the street. First, I'll show you the rear entrance, and then I'll give you a quick tour of the interior of this terminal. That orange globe you see in the distance is actually a large water tank. Let's enter the terminal through the rear or street entrance close to the large car parkade. The port of Nagasaki was originally opened 450 years ago in 1571 to accommodate Portuguese traders and missionaries. The Portuguese brought many products to Nagasaki, including tobacco, bread, textiles, castella, Portuguese sponge cake, and believe it or not, tempura. The Portuguese dish of tempero is a Lenten dish which quickly became popular in Nagasaki and eventually throughout Japan. Near this entrance there is a large lobby with tourist information. And on my right a large sign on the wall which is advertising Mui no Hi, the sea festival. Unfortunately this festival wasn't held last July and probably won't be held this year either. On this end of the terminal there are three small kiosks, tourism posters, and two glass display boxes showing local omiyagi foods such as castella, champon, and saludo. This terminal is modern, comfortable, and able to accommodate a large number of ferry passengers. It also has an excellent view. You can see that despite the pandemic restrictions, there are many people inside this terminal now. Most of these people use the ferries outside to travel to and from their island homes. These first six ticket counters on my left are for Goto Island ferries. The two kanjis used for Goto mean five islands in English. Most passengers these days use the jet foil ferries, which take about 90 minutes to complete the journey. The six ticker, ticket counter is for the high-speed ferry to Arigawa. The seventh and eighth counters are for ferries traveling to Gunkanjima, a popular abandoned coal mining island near Nagasaki. 
The remaining tourist-related cruise ferries have all been shut down due to the pandemic restrictions. My left is Yume Saito's department store, and behind that Korean paddle wheel sailing ship is Dejima Wharf, a popular restaurant district beside the harbor. Dejima Wharf is close to the Dejima Museum that I showed you in episode 11. This large catamaran ferry is the largest high speed ferry serving passengers bound for the Goto Islands. It looks very impressive in size and shape but it isn't as quick as the jet foil ferries on the other side of this route. This harbor has a covered access ramp to keep ferry passengers dry when it rains. And like Nagasaki's famous Enka song describes, it rains a lot here in Nagasaki. Over here on my left you can see quite a few pe people deboarding right now. In addition to the two jet foil ferries on this side of the ramp, you may be able to see two ferries behind the catamaran which travel to and from Iwo Jima Island, the island I showed you in episode 6. On my right is a large red ship anchor on display in front of the terminal. I'm on my way to give you a closer view of that anchor and the scenery on this end of the harbor. From here you can barely see Nagasaki's Megami Bridge in the distance. Is that bridge I showed you in episode 17. The inscription on this stone reads Nagasaki Minato, Nagasaki Harbor. As you can see this is a pretty massive anchor. As I pan to the left, you can see several of the ferries, the boardwalk, and the sea-facing side of the harbor terminal. The inverted cone architecture is unique and hard to miss. From here, you can see the towers on Inasa Mountain on the other side of this inlet. And now for this week's challenging questions. First, how many hand shovels were sitting on the step next to the ceiling pots. Second, how many benches were on the dock next to the big red ship anchor? Be the first to correctly answer both of these questions in the comments section below. I will announce the first three people who do so at the beginning of episode 32. You can find a complete list of the contents of my vlog episodes on the Facebook link listed below. You can watch all of these vlogs on my YouTube playlist. Today's B-roll involved farming, so in episode 32, my B-roll will involve cooking. See you next week.